Welcome back to the channel guys and this is going to be the third and final installment of the Tactics mini series. Let's do it. So first things first, last season was an absolute blast. We ended up winning the league by a ridiculous 27 points. We didn't get beaten and the tactic was way better than we ever thought it could be. But I thought to start the video, because we left this episode 2 in the middle of the first season, I thought I'd just clear up what happened. Um, and we obviously, I'm also going to put up on the screen now the uh, the stats from last season. So as you can see straight away, Ricardinho and Gabriel Silva got the top scorers in the league. And those guys, if you remember from episode 1, were my shadow striker and inside forward attack. That was the aim, that those two guys were going to score our most goals. And not only did they score our most goals, they scored the most goals in the season. Also, Lucas Suarez um, at the top of the average rating list and the assists list. That was also intentional with our right wing back getting forward. I'm going to show you in a minute. He's even still doing that in this season. So it's something that's definitely carried over to this season. I just thought at the start of the video, I'm just going to show you guys what happened in terms of the, uh, the goals, the assists and the average ratings and things like that. Um, to do with our tactic because that's why I said I wanted. So on to the second season and as you can see we have carried on the fantastic form. Obviously we've been beaten this year because that was never going to happen but we are in the top four. The big three of the top four teams are in front of us and Sporting inevitably will be in front of us at some point but for now after 11 games we are fourth. Now the main tactic is the same that has been working very well especially against teams uh, mid-table and below. Uh, that has been working absolutely fine. We've upgraded the team, as you can see in the season preview right here. We are the 8th best team in the league. We came in at around 11th or 12th in pre-season, so we're already better than a 4 or 5 teams at the bottom. But a few out signings, uh, and we're up into the top 8. So that's fantastic. I'll show you those signings in a second. But we have played, in these first 11 games, we have played every single one of those top teams. So we've played Benfica, Braga, Porto and Sporting, which tells you a little bit of how our season's gone. We couldn't have really got a much harder first 10-11 games. Um, we're in a match right now as well, and I'm going to show you why that is in a second. But our first tough game of the season came against Benfica. I'm going to show you exactly what happened now. So here was the game. We got a two-all draw, but we should have won the game. We got two really tough injuries, one to our best player and one to our second best player, which was crazy. Um, but yeah, we ended up getting a draw near the end with a penalty from Gabriel Silva. But the big story here is how many chances we created, how many XG we created against Benfica. Now, again, like I said, we should have won this game. They got an own goal, an absolute worldie from David Neres. So their, uh, their XG or their chances created weren't really that high. So if you look there, 11 shots... Um, in 0.99 XG is like what, 0 .9, not 0 0.09 XG per shot, which is fantastic for us. I don't want to like delve into the stats and sort of stuff that too much because a lot of people think XG is a lot of whatever, but I like it as a guide and it showed me there that we did really well. So the things that I changed for the Benfica game were this. So first of all, against Benfica, we used our second tactic, which was a Santa Clara underdog. Now, we are in a game right now, so just ignore that. I'll tell you why we're in it in a second. We're 4-0 up against Vitoria in the cup. But for the purposes of the Benfica game, we used this tactic here, which is a Santa Clara underdog. Uh, I've, I've gone through it a bit before uh, with the slightly more direct passing the slightly higher tempo, the narrower possession tactics, distribute to the striker um, and the mid-block and all that stuff. So I did that in episode two. I've been using this against the top teams, but a slight change this season, whereas last year I didn't need to do this. This year I feel like I do need to do it. So what I've been doing with the Santa Clara underdog is I've been pulling these two guys back, right? That has led to us winning the ball in a much better areas because rather than in a mid-block and these guys getting bypassed, this time... What happens is, is we're in two banks of four here, and then these two are above the ball. So as soon as we win the ball, we have instantly got two options ahead of it. So this season against the top teams, against Benfica, this is what we've been doing. And I've been putting this guy in inverted winger support, because he is an inverted winger support anyway up there. And this guy, rather than an inside forward attack, this side is on an inverted winger attack down this side. So it's pretty similar. I've just moved them back. And obviously you can't have an inside forward at left midfield. So inverted winger on attack is the next best thing to that. I don't change anything in terms of this, but I've been changing roles and duties in some big games. So against Benfica, we had to play against David Neres and Angel Di Maria. Now, we all know how good those two are, especially Di Maria. Now, he was absolutely killing us at the start of the game. He actually was the guy that created the own goal that they scored from. Um, and what I did there, because he was playing down his right-hand side, so I had to look at my left-hand side. So the thing that I did there, and these are a few tips that you guys can use in your games, especially against the big teams, is... I noticed that those two were killing us on the wings. So first thing I did is find out that Henrique, via the analysis tab here, 
was way too high up, right? When I, when I looked at the opposition analysis, I saw that Di Maria was really close to him. I don't want that. I don't want him really close because he's going to get skinned, right? He's going to get skinned. If we're not close, like this game here, I could potentially get him a bit closer to him. Does it, we don't need it. We're 4-0 up. But if we're in a bit of trouble this game and I saw my left back close to their uh, left right winger, I would probably drop us a little bit or push us a bit higher up just just to get out away from that because my left back is a lot of the time my out ball um, in possession because my right back just bombs up the pitch as we know. So my left back is a, is a safe out ball. So what I do is when we're against a big team like Benfica or Sporting or whoever, I click hold position because that way he's never in front of the ball and he can never be caught out of position when they transition and a top winger like Di Maria will absolutely punish us like he did by the way this was all inside the match i was learning it on the fly inside the game at the start of the game i went into it like you just saw a minute ago right with the guys at high up and i changed this in the benfica game and now i'm using it all the time so as I'm, as as the tactic series has gone on the different tactics have been evolving and i'm just going to show you guys step by step each one as it's evolved so i've been moving them back like that the second thing I was doing was noticing that Adriano was just chasing shadows, right? My team aren't good enough to go and race around and chase the ball in uh, midfield. And he was just getting bypassed and it left Victor Bobson on himself in DM and we were struggling. So straight away, I just put this guy on anchor man, right? It was just sat there then. So locking down this little area, just, just so many, so many attacks then just sort of went our way because they had no space to, uh, to, to improve into. The last um, change I made was De La Fuente, he was now playing against a team that's really aggressive and there is absolutely no reason to come deep. The reason why there's no reason to come deep is because their defensive line, well, let's just say it figuratively, just to show you guys like in real time, last year I was playing against defences that were really deep, like here, right? Against Benfica, their defence was up here. So what happened is my deep line forward was coming back into the field and just squishing the play up. So I actually changed him in the games to advance forward and what happened there, he was actually running in behind and was getting a lot of balls into the flanks um, for him to chase onto. And then other people would arrive and would counterattack that way. So that was the other change because deep line forward is a very possession-based um, and a movement-based role um, that won't be the focal point, but it will sort of bring players into play. But we didn't have enough of the ball to be bringing players into play. So advanced forward worked for us. It was basically a back eight or, or a two banks of four, whatever you want to call it, and then two guys up front there that sort of um, that offered us an out ball, right? I didn't want to put Topolovic up front because he was sort of too far away. I want a link man to help link the, the, the striker and these guys. So that was the tactic. That, this has changed now, this tactic. It has changed to this um, inside the game. I haven't, I haven't saved it just yet, but every single game at the start, I am making those changes. So what I should do is I should save it like this, right? Which is what I'm going to do. Obviously, I won't. I'll... Um, the anchor man is very situational. So I do start with Bowen in midfielder. Um, it was just so happened in that game against Benfica, I did notice that. But usually he stays as a Bowen in midfielder and this guy doesn't have a whole position. I, but what I do every single every single time against the top teams is bring these two guys back. Now it's something that especially after you've been promoted is I would definitely uh, encourage from you guys. If you're struggling and you're conceding goals, just bring your white wingers back to this position. Seriously, just do it. Just try it. What have you got to lose? If you're already losing, just try it and let me know how you get on in the comments because that's fantastic. But now I'm going to go back to the uh, the other games of the season and show you guys what's been happening. So here was another game against Braga. And against Braga, I thought we might be able to get away with attacking midfield at the left and attacking midfield right. Now, that did work in some sense because their fullbacks were quite weak. So I thought leaving these guys up the pitch would help us more than hurt us. And if you look at the stats, that would suggest I'm right. If you look at the scoreline, however you would suggest that I was wrong. Now, few little things to note. Jallo scored a penalty at the end, which significantly increased their XG. Again, don't want to get too bogged down into it, but they had a lot of possession, but we were breaking all the time, constantly. We missed a lot of chances this game. Um, so my tactic, I found, did work. Um, it did create at least a draw, in my opinion. They had just better players. Uh, that first goal there by De La Vega was fantastic. Just went through about three players, and just smashed it in. And I quickly realised that I needed to uh, needed to just accept sometimes that as much as I can coach these these performances, my players can't yet do what I need them to do. A couple of games after Braga, we played against Porto, and look at this again. We've lost three two, but it's a very very player quality uh, based. Um, I'm not sure why 
um, the, the tactic has the guys wide. We didn't start like that at all. We started with guys down there. Maybe I loaded into the match like that because I'm too lazy to change it, but then inside the game before the game actually kicked off on the team talk, I moved them down. So it probably recognised it as, as this. I didn't play like this. I played with the wingers down in the midfield left and midfield right spot. But again, if you notice, yes, we did get a penalty and that inflates our XG slightly, but possession-wise, pass completion-wise and shot-wise, we were just as good. And if you look, those guys played their best team, right? It was a very good team. It was, yeah, they didn't rest anyone. Now, why would they? They're in the league. Um, but yeah, this was a very good uh, performance by us. But again, we had two offside goals from De La Fuente. He's still, he's still sort of like getting involved in the club. He's, get, he's, he's still um, integrating, should we call it. So yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a problem with him. He's a little bit sometimes off the pace, just slightly. But when he gets a chance, he usually does put it in. So I'm just waiting for him January onwards. I think he'll come really, really good. He started quite well, but I think he'll get even better. So he's a player that we've got up front now. De La Fuente, here he is. He has scored five goals in 12 games. He has got two goals in the current game that I'm playing right now, so that will be seven in 13, which is a very good start. But, um, but yeah, he's sometimes a little bit off it in terms of some areas. Topolovic, I brought in as a shadow striker over Gabriel Silva. Now, Gabriel Silva was one of our best players last year, uh, but this year he's done quite well, but I couldn't really turn down this guy. Um, he's got everything I want. So he cost me 1.5 million, um, and I couldn't turn that down just because of how good he is everywhere at 18 years old. Another thing is obviously his value, so he's going to sell for a lot, which will fund a lot of my next phase of this save. Um, and yeah, he sort of has to play because he's very good and he's only just joined, so again, he's just bedding in himself. Um, the other signings I made were uh, Cardo, so at centre-back, I had to sell Paolo Henrique. He's very similar. So nothing too different. I've just basically sort of upgraded with the same sort of players in different areas. Um, Luca Bobson, Victor Bobson was just a guy that came back on loan last year um, on loan. But yeah, he's he's upgraded the team. So we've had we've done a few upgrades, but the team is quite similar in terms of Adriano, um, Lucas Suarez, Henrique, Batista, Ricardinho. I've used um, who else we've used this year? We've used Serrara, Serginho again. We've used Gabriel Silva again this year. So the team is not too different. I've not gone like a full overhaul. It's just the tactic has slightly changed. The home tactic though, however, like I said, I've come to come back to this match. The home tactic that I'm using right now is very similar. It's working against these teams that aren't the top five teams or top four teams. And the main goal is this, right? So as I'm going to show you again, it's working all the time. So we get the ball with the deep line playmaker and Suarez is already gone, right? We know that. Our support inverted winger Almeida is looking to get the ball. And he gets it, and look what happens. Again, it's just a carbon copy of what's happening last year. Suarez, fantastic, bang. So, like I said, I have not changed the home tactic. It hasn't changed at all. It's still working in the top division. So, there's, I don't need to tell you guys about that. But the underdog tactic that is going to help for if we qualify for Europe and the guys, the, the top four teams, to try and get into that top four, top three, um, that has changed by just pulling our wingers back and also watching how what happens in game. Now, I can't really predict what's going to happen in the game. It's sort of just what happens on the fly. And if I happen to do a game and nothing happens, then I can't really show you it. So it's not something I can actively show you as such. But if you've got questions, put them in the comments below and I will definitely, definitely get back to them. But it's just seeing things in the match engine like Di Maria was a problem and just sort of locking down that flank, putting the fullback support on hold position, putting the ball winning midfielder on anchor man, and it sort of just solidified that area. Um, but you, what you don't want to do is just drag everyone back. You don't want to start doing that to haul the team. You want to do little subtle changes that will change the game in your favour without going, right, I've got a wing back on attack and he's my main outlet like Suarez is, but then all of a sudden just changing him to a wing back defend or a full back defend. Like, no, because that gets rid of all your threat. You don't want to get rid of your threats. You just want to sort of just change it slightly to just sort of make the game in your favour. Now, like I said, we've been really clinical this game, but I just wanted to show you that goal there from Suarez. Um, again, just where my deep line playmaker gets it, my inverted winger drops in, he comes in. Fantastic by Suarez, by the way. Um, but again, I think I'm going to stick with this tactic. I don't think this tactic's going to evolve that much. Um, so that's why this episode is the last episode. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to upgrade in each area as we go on. And the tactic should be absolutely fine. 
Um, obviously, as we go on, maybe we go to shorter passing, but it's slightly shorter as it is. I don't think I need to do much to this tactic. So, so yeah, so that's why it's the last episode. But, like I mentioned before, the underdog tactic is very different in terms of what I've been doing inside the game. But if you want to give this tactic a try, it's absolutely up to you. I have sort of done it around my team, so it might not work for you guys. But feel free to try and let me know. Just like I said, pull these guys back and uh, and, and maybe uh, um, forward on advance forward. But everything else is pretty... Uh, pretty similar to what i've always had it um i hope you like the series if there's anything you want me to do more like this i am quite wary though that i don't want to be doing this for like four five six seven episodes because if you want me to be totally honest views wise which is why we all do youtube um they don't do as well as series as go on right uh these little mini series is like let's play as a usually okay but um these sort of things people just get what they need out of the first episode and they don't bother with the last one so i don't want to just like bore you guys with all that but I wanted to do three episodes which I think have good information in that you guys can use. But I didn't want to just sort of like carry on when there's no point. So um, so yeah, that's going to be the end of that. And thank you for watching, guys. Thank you every, for all the support. Honestly, it's been amazing on the channel. And um, leave a subscription. That would be fantastic. And until next time, as always, I'll catch you then. Goodbye.